Hey guys, time for another teardown. Gonna have a look inside my uh, ASUS RT-AC88U uh, Wi-Fi modem router combination box thing. It's got the uh, usual ports on the back, it's got 8 here. Uh, WAN input, power, and uh, the USB as well. And it's got the uh, four antennas like you'd usually see. There's another model of this where it's got uh, two extra antennas because it's got another like 5 gigahertz or another 2.4 gigahertz channel or something. So you've got three channels. This has got 2.4 gig and 5 gig. The other one's got an extra uh, channel on one of those, those frequencies, but it's only got four ports because it does away with four of the ports. Instead, it has that extra Wi-Fi channel, but I don't need three channels. I don't really need um, eight ports. I only use two of them link aggregated together. But uh, yeah, the USB here that'll let you either have a like a USB hard drive or a thumb drive, yeah, you know, like a little memory stick thing, or you can use it as a uh, a backup WAN port. So you can have this one going to your uh, your normal wide internet, and you can have a 4G or a cellular sort of stick in there as a backup and it will automatically switch back and forth depending on um, which ones are up and which ones are down but what I'm interested to do is to see what's inside this thing so I'll take the cover off um, and we'll start poking around and see what we can find check it out I can see why this thing costs so much being their flagship product and all we've got huge anodized heat sinks all nice and red even though you're basically not going to see it you see this section here through the uh, through the front grill that sits there like that so you see a bit of red through there but yeah it's all been anodized the uh, the wires coming out to the uh, antennas it's got like little plastic clips holding them into place they don't flap around in the breeze but yeah that's um, impressing me so far I've taken all the screws out so I'll take these heat sinks off it's got like a seal pad to um, get the heat through so there's these uh, cans on top of the that's that'll be the processor and the RAM underneath there and under this side will be all the uh, radios. So we have 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. Maybe they're one in one and one in the other, or probably one is what we got here. Maybe these two antennas might be 2.4, and these two antennas might be 5 gigahertz. Not sure how it's split, but these cans are proving a little bit difficult to take off. They um they look like they're just pressed onto a soldered former, like a a carrier, and then the top clicks on. But they're kind of hard to get un undone. There's going to be probably seal pads underneath as well, so that the uh, heat from the chip goes through the seal pad to the middle, then again through a seal pad to the uh, heat sink. So it might be a bit difficult to undo, but what I'll do, I'll unplug these uh, these cables and we'll lift the board out to see what's on the back. Basically on the front here, I'll, I'll run through the front. We've got uh, the LEDs down the bottom. There are uh, all the status LEDs. Looks like we've got some sort of header here which goes into the, uh, the processor area. Um, that's just labelled J3 with a G, RX, TX and V. So maybe a ground and vault and then we've got RX and TX. And that might be a serial programming header. Um, possibly there. It might be interesting for some uh, playing around if someone was inclined to hook something up and see if they can play with this stuff. Because this the the, so, the the firmware for this is actually uh, open sourced. So um, you can get different firmwares. I'm actually running um, uh, openwrt-merlin on this which gives a, a few extra functions few extra features which I use uh, it's it's worth using that one if you do any more networky sort of stuff over and above the uh, standard features uh, they also push out um, the uh, uh, security updates a bit quicker than ASUS do but um, then we've got some magnetics up here for our um, Ethernet ports another little magnetic section here for the WAN Looks like we've got some uh, power supply stuff will be around this area, maybe on the underside as well, like an inductor there, a big bulk capacitor. Uh, what else have we got? Looks like some uh, power supply sections along here. There's three. Looks like we've got a capacitor, inductor, and a little controller chip. Three little groups. And that's pretty much all for the top of the board. Um, I'll pull the, this uh, board out, and we'll have a look underneath, see what's there. Okay, let's pull this out and flip it over. <coughs> so we've got another can on the back, and looks like we've got a chip here. Well, this may be the CPU and the uh, and a RAM chip there, or a uh, the flash chip. And then we've got this. Uh, what's that doing there? Looks like some sort of strength or 
maybe a shield or a spreader, heat spreader or something. Because that's got a few screws. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Which are holding this plate. That's actually uh, aluminium. It's an aluminium plate. Maybe combined shielding and heat spreading. So let's have a bit of a closer look at what these are going on here. Well, of course, this one here, that's not a, uh, a processor. That's the uh, the 4 plus 1 gigabit Ethernet switch for the four ports here. Then there's another four ports. And that must go somewhere on the other side under the can or something. Uh, that's just a uh, an RTL 8365MB. Uh, 4 plus 1 gigabit Ethernet switch. You can see all of these little group of capacitors down here, these tiny little capacitors. On the other side of that, that's where the main processor will be, like an ARM processor or something. Uh, there are all the decoupling caps and that's where all the, you can see all the traces coming in. That's, like I said, the flash RAM. I'm not going to bother lifting up that um, that sticker there, but it's going to be like a, a maybe 8, 8 meg, 16 meg, something. Uh, just the uh, the flash memory. And there's a few other uh, power supplies around the place. All these inductors, one, two, three, four, five, six. They'll be doing the various voltages for the different things. And this plate here, I actually unscrewed it, and it turns out it seems like it's a heat spreader or a heat sink. It's got the uh, thermal pad there, and this big exposed copper um, uh, ground plane there. And it just screws down, so it must be uh, just absorbing some of the heat and sinking it out somehow. Maybe just expelling the heat through the, uh, the vents in the back of the case. And there's a, a, another case here with some capacitor sticking through. And uh, there'll be something going on underneath there, maybe power supply stuff. So I'll, I'll have a poke at these uh, these cans. I'm not going to try too hard. I don't want to damage this thing because the internet is very precious to me. And this thing was expensive. So uh, yeah, I'll have a bit of a poke, see if we can see inside. But if not, we might have a bit of a guess at what else we can find. Good news everyone, we got in. I left one of the caps on on the other side because I didn't want to push my luck too much, but this is the back side, we'll look at the boring side first. Pull this cap off and it's just got two power supplies, that's what these two capacitors are for. There's also uh, two inductors and two little control chips, that's just for various voltages that are needed. But the reason they put this cap on is uh, for shielding, because if you have a circuit that's going to be radiating and you cap the top, shield the top, it can still radiate it out the back, so they've put this cap on to stop that, and that along with this big copper uh, plane and the uh, this heat sink, which will be acting as a shield, uh, that's uh, going to be um, stopping any radiation coming out the back. So if you flip it over, and I'll explain why they've done this on the back in just a sec when I flip it over, you'll see I've got the two caps off here. Now, the reason for this is these little four sections here, and there's going to be another four in there, they're all the uh, Wi-Fi amplifiers, this part here. They're going to be producing a bit of heat because they're amplifiers. That's just what happens. So that's going to be sinking to this uh, big ground plane, and then this heat sink sits on there and draws the heat out so these amplifiers can run nice and cool. That's the heat sink for the amplifiers. Whereas this big one, this is a heat sink for these caps, but that's heat synced through just with one pad to the uh, to the Wi-Fi chip there and one underneath there there's two Wi-Fi chips there and then these big strip here that's just going to be getting rid of radiated heat and it's going to be conducting through all of these uh, little shield cans the the borders and barriers here up from that uh, that ground plane so basically what we've got inside here I'll zoom in on this part and we'll um, we'll run through there and I'll show you what's going on so this is going to be mirrored. What's in here is going to be mirrored in this side. I'm not, I'm not going to pull this can off because I don't want to push my luck. But this here is the main uh, Wi-Fi chip. This is a, uh, a BCM4366, a Broadcom chip. And that's a uh, actually a, a 4 plus 4, 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz chip. So that's uh, doing our Wi-Fi. You can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 outputs. And it looks like what they're doing is they're actually sharing the antennas. So there's this one and this one here. They actually join up just here with a little, uh, like some little uh, RF black magic chip or something that's like you got the two of these come up to here and then two come up to here. And then you got from this side, you got two coming across to here and then two traces coming up to here. See these two chips? They're the amplifier chips. 
So this is feeding in to this side and then to, into this side. These two here, they connect to this little tiny connector just here, which then goes to antenna. These two connect to this one, which comes up to this antenna. Up here, like off the screen up here. So you got one output, two outputs. So we got 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. Then the same over here. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. I, I don't have scopes and stuff to analyze all this stuff, but that looks like to me the, the most logical thing because the chips are slightly different in each can. So you've got a small chip here and a larger chip here. So you've got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz amplifiers, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz amplifiers, so on and so forth. And then across to the other side over inside here. So that way we've got our, um, our four channels from this chip and then under this can we've got four channels from that chip all balancing out and all working together. So that's uh yeah pretty nice. You can see these uh these traces here, the RF traces are all nice and curved. The reason they do that is if you put sharp corners, it's gonna radiate energy from those those sharp points. By having the nice curved traces, there's no uh, wasted energy or very little wasted energy from any uh, the lack of any points to radiate from. So that's gonna ensure that all of energy gets into those amplifier chips and then also nice smooth traces up to the uh, the connectors and that way we're going to get as much energy out through the antennas where we want it. Alright so I'll slide this across and we'll have a look at the uh, the main CPU. That's in here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. And this also is a, uh, a Broadcom chip. So this is our, our main our main CPU and then we got some uh, some RAM here. On the other side was the uh, the flash memory that's like holding all of our BIOS settings, all of our uh, configuration settings, all that sort of stuff. This is the actual RAM itself when it's actually running. This here, this is a Broadcom chip. It's a uh, BCM4709 plus a whole heap of other little qualifiers for the uh, particular variant and particular you know style, whatever. But the uh, but the base type is the uh, 4709, and it's a a comms processor with network acceleration hardware. And this is actually doing four of our uh, four of our Ethernet ports, which are uh, up here. These the four that this is uh, this magnet is for. That's going straight to our CPU here. The other four here go to that chip on the underside, and then that will be feeding into here separately. So this chip it's a uh, actually a one gigahertz ARM Cortex A9 dual core, and it has the uh, five gigabit port. So that will be doing four. Uh, for Ethernet and then the one LAN. So that's basically what we got inside all of those cans. I'm going to try and put this thing back together and hopefully it works. But um, yeah, I will zoom out and uh, give you one more quick overview and then I'll shut this thing up. Okay, so you can see how it's all sitting there. Once again, CPU over here, a Wi Fi underneath here and also under here, feeding through to our four antennas. These four ports are feeding straight into the, uh, the CPU. These four here are going to that chip on the underside of the board, which is sitting around about here somewhere on the underside, and that will feed, then feed into here, uh, like separately as a secondary sort of thing. Um, this one here is our WAN port, of course, and that's going straight into this chip. And then it's just a whole heap of support circuitry, power supplies, and uh, filtering, and all that sort of stuff. I also noticed that there's some uh, little headers here. Uh, we got. TRST, TDL, TDO, TMS, and TCK for a group of five here. And then these ones here is 3.3 volts, UART RX, UART TX, and ground. So we've got some UART ports there, some other comms here. So it looks like it's um, set up to be somewhat hackable, maybe, if anyone is, uh, is inclined to do that. Anyone who is a lot smarter than me, that is. But yeah, so that's uh, pretty much what we got inside our um, RTAC88U, ASUS gigabit dual band router all right guys hope you found that interesting don't forget the patreon keep watching videos and we'll see you next time